This is my ultimate Raspberry Pi that we created a little while ago now. Uh, it's the 16 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5 in a really nice Pyron Mine Max case, which has two M.2 slots, and it's a really nice maxed out Raspberry Pi. But all in, it costs well over 200 pounds, so it's not particularly budget. So today I wanna have a look at this. This is my more budget Raspberry Pi build, if you like. This is the Pyroman 5 mini case, which we recently put together on a short here on YouTube and also over on TikTok. Do go follow me on TikTok if you're not already. Uh, and I thought this was a great budget case. I think at time of recording, about £40 for the case and the module. And it still gives you an M.2 slot and all the kind of nice expandability. So I thought, well, Let's pair that with a budget Raspberry Pi, and that would be the Raspberry Pi 5, but with two gigabytes of RAM. So the Raspberry Pi itself is less than 50 pounds. So all in all, this is less than 100 pounds, and that makes it a much more budget computer. It's uh, less than half the price of our maxed out Raspberry Pi. So today I wanna to ask the question, well, what can you actually do with a Raspberry Pi 5 with two gigabytes of RAM? Is that really enough to do anything? Um, and I think the answer is yes, there's a lot you can do with it. So let's have a look at a few of the options and see what we can do with this thing. So maybe surprisingly, actually, the first thing that you can quite comfortably do is run a full desktop operating system on here. Uh, Raspberry Pi OS runs absolutely fine in its default configuration in two gigabytes. Yes, of course, you're not gonna have a million programs open and be doing a million things at once. Having said that, Chromium runs perfectly well. Uh, basic web browsing is no problem at all. And in fact, you can even watch YouTube. I would even say 1080p full screen is working perfectly fine here and it isn't using the whole system memory. So there isn't really any slowdown. If, you know, if you're uh, conscious with the amount of tabs that you have open and you're only kind of doing one thing at a time, this actually works perfectly well as a full computer. You can install things like LibreOffice and have a full office suite that works no problem at all. Uh, you can use things like Pi Apps to find more applications from the software center and install all sorts of games and other programs that will actually run with two gigabytes of RAM, no problem at all. Like I said, yes, okay, you're not doing massive multitasking here and the system will very quickly slow down and as soon as it runs out of RAM. I should say that we are testing here as well just using an SD card. Uh, we do have an M.2 slot. We're using that PCI lane that the Raspberry Pi 5 has uh, and things like loading times and any kind of read writes really are gonna be much more performant if you use that. I'm not using it here just because with this particular case, actually getting to the M.2 slot, it's a little bit of a pain. You kind of have to take a whole side off um, and then angle in to get the screwdriver in or you'd have to pull the whole pie out. So it's in terms of this case, it's not really made for switching and swapping, unlike its bigger brother, which that gives you full access to both slots just by removing the side. So we are using the SD card for testing here, but nonetheless, yeah, you could use this as a desktop. You could put in an M.2 card and have better loading times and that sort of thing, um, and no problem at all. It works. For a budget, simple computer, it works pretty well. Having said that, so does getting a second-hand desktop, laptop, other computer for under 100 pounds and installing Linux on it. Uh, in fact, we have done many tight, such videos on this channel of showing all sorts of hardware that you can get um, that would cost less than this um, and probably give you a better performance situation because you would almost certainly have more than two gigabytes of RAM. So I would say while you can run desktop on here, it is not the ideal use case for this kind of computer. What I would say is a slightly more uh, useful maybe use case for this computer is running a more niche operating system that is intended for a more specific task. For me, naturally, with this channel, um, that would be emulation and running old games. Here, even just off that SD card, uh, Recal Box absolutely flies, which is you can actually install directly from the Raspberry Pi Imager app, um, no problem at all. And yeah, setup is smooth. It instantly recognized my Xbox controller and loaded up some ROMs and straight away I was able to play 
Nintendo 64 titles, PS1 titles, all obviously older titles from that SNES, NES, Game Boy, all that sort of stuff, instantly on this with no problem at all. If you're looking for a simple, low-powered emulation box that maybe you plug into a TV or something else, uh, again, really good use case. And because you're only ever gonna be doing one thing when you're doing that, you're gonna be playing the game and that's it, uh, it actually works very well on limited RAM. It's not gonna be necessarily as good if you tried to push it a little bit harder, things like you know trying to maybe run some PS2 games or even some PS1 games may suffer just because the GPU is sharing that RAM. So there is kind of quite a limited resource there. So I would temper your expectations, but definitely if you wanna play anything from like the 90s and older, you're gonna have a good time here and it works very well. But where I think this really, really shines as a computer is as a single app server. So what I mean by that is by basically installing a server operating system without a desktop, without all the extra RAM usage that that will bring, um, and just running one application on this. This thing is so low powered that, yeah, you can basically install whatever one app you might want and set it and forget about it. So I wanted to look at a few different options here just to give people some ideas. Obviously, you can do kind of basic stuff like uh, use it as a, a NAS. You've got access to those USB ports. You could have USB storage. You have that M.2 drive. So you could have a couple of terabytes of storage on here. Um, and it would be very low power, certainly com compared to any desktop computer or even dedicated NAS hardware. Um, yeah, this is sipping power. And so I wanted to look at a few other things um, that work really, really well here. So for doing this, uh, we will just be using the Raspberry Pi OS Lite images, which is basically uh, the Debian-based operating system from the Raspberry Pi people, uh, but without a desktop environment. So you've just got the command line interface here. Uh, when you go to use the imager, you can set up SSH and do all those sorts of things. So yeah, we can easily connect to this over the network. And the first thing I want to try is actually running a Minecraft server. While of course there is the dedicated RAM meme when it comes to Minecraft servers, a basic vanilla Minecraft servers, especially optimized versions like Paper MC, which is what we're using here, actually work incredibly well on quite low end hardware. And I'm pretty sure that this Raspberry Pi is more than enough to do that. So we went about getting this set up. Uh, it's really quite straightforward. Just make sure that you install the version of Java that you need for the version of Minecraft you're gonna run. Uh, for me personally, I use PaperMC as the Minecraft server, uh, just because it, it is a very optimized version of the Minecraft server compared to the vanilla stock server. Um, and also it's very easy to install. You just download the jar file and run it. And then it will take you through all the setup and kind of set up all the files and all the stuff that you need to run the server. And then it starts up the server. And within a few minutes, we have a Minecraft server running. I then connected to this from my MacBook and uh, yeah, no issues at all. I know I'm just one person. Um, and I will say again, because we are running on this on the SD card, um, loading new chunks took a while. Uh, they didn't, take as long once they'd been loaded, but creating and writing those new chunks did take a little while. You'd get better performance here from uh, using an SSD, but it works. Uh, there's, there's no tick issues. You can move about the world freely. You can break blocks. You can do all the things that you would expect to be able to do. So if you want to be able to run a little home Minecraft server, maybe you've got a couple of kids that want to be able to play together or whatever you want to do, uh, you can do that and you can do it with a very low powered device like this, um, which I dare say as well, considering the cost of running um, Minecraft, Minecraft servers in the cloud, uh, you wouldn't take very long and you would have paid for the hardware uh, from doing this. Uh, certainly running this for less than a year will have paid for itself by doing that. Yes, that two gigabytes means that you're quite limited. I wouldn't say this is gonna be a nice experience for more than like four or five players, um, but, it works perfectly fine. Uh, and you could probably even run a few light mods if you wanted to. But again, I would stick to a more vanilla experience with this. Still, I was really impressed by how well this works. And again, as a single use, just running as a Minecraft server, it works very well. The next thing I wanted to check out is Pi-hole. Uh, Pi-hole is a piece of software that I actually run on my home server already, um, but it kind of originated out of running it on a Pi basically using a Raspberry Pi as your DNS server for your home network. And 
Surprise, surprise, because that's where it was born, it runs incredibly well on the Pi, and it really has quite low kind of uh, performance requirements anyway. So unless you had a really, really busy local network, it's gonna run really nicely on this Pi uh, with only two gigabytes of RAM. Don't need a lot of RAM to run this. Um, it's that processor, that CPU speed that's probably gonna be more hammered anyway, even if you had a lot of traffic. Uh, but they have a nice automated install script, which makes doing this very, very easy, particularly if you are coming just, you know, you've just flashed the operating system, you're not doing anything else with this, and it's just gonna be your DNS server. Why would you wanna do that? Well, one of the big attractions to doing that is that it'll automatically block a lot of the tracking that a lot of apps and programs do these days. Uh, and it'll also block a lot of adverts as well. So a lot of the ad servers get automatically blocked. So you'll notice just running this and setting your router to use this as its DNS, you'll notice that a lot of uh, your devices automatically then have ad blocking built in, which is really, really nice. Um, I've been running it on my own home server for quite a while now, um, have no problem with it at all. It is a really nice bit of kit, and that simple installer makes it even easier. I will say, if you're planning to run multiple applications, it can be a little bit tricky, and you have to start kind of understanding how to do that um, in this kind of environment. But as a just a vanilla straight, you're only doing this on this Pi, it works very, very well, and you're never going to have any issues running it on the Raspberry Pi 5 with two gigabytes of RAM. And then something else I looked at, which is becoming a little bit more of a project than I expected, is Peertube. Yes, you can actually run Peertube, so you can host your own YouTube um, on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, Peertube kind of really just doesn't use a huge amount of resource, unless, of course, you become a very, very popular instance. Uh, the only big hitter here is when it comes to transcoding media. Uh, it's going to take a hit. The Raspberry Pi is not very good at doing that. So if you're running it kind of for your own purposes, it's probably not going to be so bad, especially if you can get away with not transcoding the media. If you do need to transcode the media, I would suggest that, yeah, maybe the Pi isn't quite up to that, or at least taper your expectations. It's going to take a while to transcode those videos. Uh, it'll do it, but it is just going to take a little while. So, you know, for me, I will probably stick to using a different device to do peer, to run a Peertube instance. My Peertube instance is actually down at the moment. Um, I've not had a huge amount of traffic to it, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to keep that running, mainly because it is costing a lot of electricity to keep that going. Uh, so if I was able to do something like this, it would definitely make it a lot easier. And I would say that I could. I only release like a video a week, so it doesn't really matter if it's going to take five hours to transcode that video, uh, because I only have to do it once a week, and it can do that, and then the power savings from the rest of the week more out there that way, running it instead on like my home server, or I was running it on a trash can Mac Pro. So there's a few options. There's actually five different things that you definitely can do with the Raspberry Pi 2 gigabyte. Uh, and I'm gonna say, really, really impressed. Definitely worth taking a look at if you're wanting to do much more of a kind of single use home server kind of setup. Um, this works really, really well. Like if you just wanna run a micro server or you just wanna have Pi hole running, or you have another application that you just want to run, this is a great cost effective, low energy way to do it. And I love that there is quite a spectrum of Pi's now from, from two gigabytes all the way up to 16 gigabytes. So you really have the options to pick and choose what you need for your purposes. But we're gonna wrap it up there for today's video. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. We're still trying to target 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, so every single subscription really does help. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.